word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you for our many blessings. We thank you for the safe travels that many of us have had. We are grateful for all that you've given us this week. We've been blessed. The first blessing this morning was when we opened our eyes and we were able to say thank you, Lord. We ask you, please be with us this evening. Help us as we get ready to start this last bit of the service. Father, you changed what I was going to say. Please help me. You know what you want. Use me, and for that, I am grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you wonder why I said that, I had a different sermon that I thought I was going to do today. Well, that's one of the things. When I woke up this morning, I was like, okay, this is what we're getting ready to start. And suddenly it was like, God's like, nope, gib slap, wake up. I've got something different for you. When we were at our home church in Appomattox and everything this morning, I was leading out with the Sabbath school studies and everything. Um, and a story that my wife had sent to me and everything that somebody else had sent to her. And hence, we have today's sermon, Empathy versus Sympathy. Now, Many people, they know what sympathy is. Sympathy is when you can feel sorry for someone, or you do feel sorry for someone. But empathy is a totally different thing. And empathy is when you can actually feel what somebody's going through, because you've probably been there yourself. Empathy means that you, you can not only feel what they're going through, but you, you can understand it in a special kind of way. Now, with that, I did a little story at Appomattox, and everybody here at the house had already heard this story before, but it's one of those. There was a little mouse. He was looking through the hole, small hole in the wall into the farmer's house, and the farmer's wife come in from the store, and she was carrying a bag, and she proceeds to tell her husband, look what I got. And she brings out, of all things, a little mouse trap. She says, you know, she says, you and I are both allergic to cats. We can't have a cat around anywhere. She says, we know we got that mouse. She says, we're going to get him now. Well, the little mouse was so dismayed and so discouraged that he run through another little hole that he had to get outside. And the first thing he come upon was the chicken. And she was cackling and scratching and carrying on. And he's like, Miss Chicken, Miss Chicken, the farmer's wife has a mouse trap. They're going to try to trap me. And Chicken just looked at the little mouse and said, Well, I'm sorry, that's your problem. It's not my problem. And the little mouse was discouraged. So he went on over and he saw the little lamb. And he's like, Run up. And he goes, Mr. Lamb, Mr. Lamb, the farmer's wife has a mouse trap. They're trying to catch me. Well, the lamb just looked at him and said, Well, I feel for you. I'm sorry. I'll pray for you, but that's the best I can do right now. And really, it's not my problem. The mouse was really discouraged by then. And the next thing, he saw the cow. He ran over and he goes, Miss Cow, Miss Cow, the farmer's wife, she has a mouse trap. She's trying to kill me. And the cow just looked down at him and said, Not my problem. It doesn't affect me. It seems like you're the one who got a problem. Go away. Well, the little mouse went back to the house very discouraged by everybody's attitude. And he was wondering what he was going to do. Well, the farmer's wife set the mouse trap. And in the middle of the night, she heard that mouse trap snap. She thought, I got him. She jumped up. She didn't light. A lantern, she didn't turn on any lights or anything like that. She basically run into the kitchen thinking she had caught that mouse. What she didn't know and what she couldn't see in the dark, the mouse trap had caught the tail end of a poisonous snake. Before she knew what had happened, the snake had coiled up, turned around bitter, and managed to strike her several times. 
Well, by then, her husband had come in, had turned on the light, saw the snake. He killed the snake. And he took his wife to the doctor. And he brought her home, and she was running a fever. She was very bad. And this was back in a time when they didn't have any serum and all that. The doctor did all he could do. But she just kept getting sicker and weaker. Well, the first thing the farmer did was what everybody who's ever had a mama or a daddy, the first thing they do when you get ill, going to make you some soup. And what's the first ingredient in every soup everybody ever heard of? Chicken. So you can imagine who was first on the list. Farmer went out. Chicken got the axe. Well, he made the soup for his wife, but she just kept getting sicker and sicker. Well, family and friends started coming to visit. Well, farmer sitting there and he's like, there's hardly anything left in the house to eat and I can't leave my wife to go to the store. Well, there ain't but one thing to do. That's right. You know who got it next. Mr. Lamb became the feast of the day. Well, shortly thereafter, the farmer's wife got so ill that she passed away and died. Needless to say, the next thing you knew, the doctor's bills came in, the funeral expenses were all there, so guess who was next on the list? That's right, Miss Cal had to go to the slaughterhouse to help pay the bills. Now, each one of those animals had no empathy for the little mouse. That's the one thing we need to understand. If we don't have empathy, if we don't live to serve, how can we serve to live? And that's one of the many things. The shortest verse in the Bible, do you know what it is? It's two simple words. And it comes from Matthew chapter 11, verse 35. It says, Jesus wept. Jesus had empathy for everybody that he knew and met. He knew what we were going through. He felt our pain as nobody else could feel our pain. Jesus, all through his ministry, was out there helping people, helping them to understand the true word of God. He knew that they needed spiritual healing as much as they needed physical healing. Today, are we doing the same thing? Are we showing true empathy to our friends, to our neighbors, to the stranger on the street that we don't know? Are we looking at somebody and judging them? Snap judgment. You see that person on the street who's got a sign saying, we'll work for food. And all you're thinking is, why don't they go get a job? Everybody's hiring. But what you may not know is that they've got a history and people are looking at the history that they have. It may be that that person has turned over a new leaf, but that history is working against them. That's one of the many things we don't know. It's not ours to judge, but we need to have some empathy when we see somebody in need. Now, I'm not saying that you have to help everybody that you see Sometimes we do know some folks that are out there and they're not truly in need. They just don't want to do anything. But we still need to have empathy and understand sometimes there are folks that have to have help. And when you say you're going to pray for somebody, what you need to do is stop right there and pray for them. Because what's going to happen? Satan is going to put something in front of you to make you forget. And the next time you see that person, they're going to ask you, Did you pray for me? What are you going to say? If you tell them the truth, they're going to say, Well, what kind of Christian are you is what they're going to be thinking. And if you tell a lie, then you're going to have to go, Well, Lord, forgive me. I, you know. And once again, you'll forget to pray. And it, it, it turns into that never-ending cycle. Well... If somebody asks you to pray for them, pray for them right there. If somebody's asking you for help, and it's in your power to help them, you know, I'm not saying you have to give them a ton of money or anything like that, 
I'm just saying, if you are able to help, then do something to help. It may be something as simple as opening the door because their hands are full. It may be something as simple as somebody who's suffering and crying and you don't know what to say. You, you really don't want to ask them what's going on, but you just walk up and put your arm around them and hold them and help them. That's when empathy has kicked in. Sympathy is when you see it and say, okay, I feel sorry for them, and you go on about your business. Empathy is where you step in and you do something to help solve that problem. Jesus was an emphatic individual when he walked this earth. He knew exactly what was needed. He knew our heartache. He knew exactly how we needed to be treated. And he met people where they were. He didn't build some big fancy church and say, all right, y'all got to come here. Otherwise, I can't heal you. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus' church was wherever Jesus was. We need to be the same way. The church should be in here. This is where it starts. And it's got to start right here. We have to start showing the world what it is to be a Christian. If we're truly a Christian, then we will follow Jesus' teaching, Jesus' word. We will trust the word of God. Once again, many today, they'll tell you that you can't trust the Bible. Well, the Bible can be trusted and the Bible should be trusted simply because we know that God's word is true. And God will take care of every one of us. Although there's many out there today who will tell you God don't exist. And, you know, they'll give you all kinds of supposed scientific reasons. One thing we all know, the Bible is constantly being proved, both historically and scientifically, to be correct. Many things written in the Bible are just simple easy and God was teaching this from the very beginning and without God there is no science but without God we have nothing to base our faith on to have an anchor Jesus is that anchor Jesus is how we base our faith he is our salvation and if we're going to have empathy for our fellow man the only way we can do that is to have Jesus in our hearts. And that's one of the many things. Jesus went out healing. When he healed the ten lepers, what happened? Did nine of them come back? Nope. They went on their merry way. But that tenth one come back to say thank you. When Jesus told the one that he'd healed to present himself, to the priests and to pay what he was supposed to pay for the you know miracle of God cleansing him and everything he he was told don't say my name the reason he was told not to say the name of Jesus was because he knew that the priest would not accept that he'd been cleansed of being a leper they knew Jesus and the priest did not like Jesus. Satan knows God's word. And Satan hates Jesus. Because Jesus has the empathy that Satan will never know. Satan will deceive. Satan will destroy. That's the whole thing. But Jesus, Jesus will build you up. Jesus will give you a reason to live. It doesn't matter if you've been given a terminal diagnosis. You can choose to either cry and whine, or you can choose to trust God, that God has a plan. And to have that empathy that you present to others, God has that empathy for us. And He has a plan for your life. So, go out here, see that need, feel that need. When somebody comes to you with a problem, 
and it's a problem that you can help solve, help solve it. Take the time. Show what a Christian truly is. Show them what Jesus showed. Jesus never turned away someone who come asking for healing. But he didn't just heal the body. Jesus healed the spirit. Jesus healed the mind. It's one of those things. When Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, he had empathy for Lazarus. And the reason he wept, he knew that he was going to call Lazarus forth. And he called only Lazarus. He made sure of that. Because if Jesus said, come on out, everybody, everybody would have been popping out of their tombs coming out. He said, Lazarus, come forth. But the reason Jesus wept was not that Lazarus had died, like the ones who, the paid mourners who were watching, you know, look how he loved him. Jesus was weeping because he knew that once he called Lazarus forth, that Lazarus would have to die one more time. That's why he was weeping. He had empathy for where he, he knew what Lazarus was going to have to go through. But at the same time, he also knew that God was going to get the glory for Lazarus coming forth. And that's the one thing. As long as we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, that God gets the glory, not us. And we have that empathy that Jesus had. We can accomplish many great miracles. Just remember, it's God's will, God's timing, and Jesus' love and empathy for us to give us the faith, the love, and the empathy for others. Once again, folks, let us end with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for our many blessings. We are grateful for all that you've given us. We are grateful for everyone who was able to join us today. We are grateful for the medium that you've given us to use to get your word out to the rest of the world. Father, help us to go forward. Help us to be like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give us the empathy to be able to help our fellow man. Help us to remember the Great Commission to go forth, spreading the good news of the gospel, which is good news. Help us, Father, so that we may spread the word of Jesus and talk about your love for this fallen world. Help us to get ready for the end times that are so near. Revelation is a book that is being opened every day. We see it breaking open. Father, give us the strength so we fall not away. Help us to delve deep into your word so that we may know your truths and your love. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.